with the post-game press conference and welcome Coach Bray and let him open with an uh, opening statement that will take questions for our student athletes. What a great college game. Um, it was thrilling to be part of it. It lived up to the hype. We're extremely disappointed. Um, we really thought we had a great chance of beating them, and I thought we displayed that. But I think you got to give them credit. They made some big plays. They made some timely three-point shots at key times. And um, we got a little stagnant offensively, <laughs> but it's easy to get stagnant against that length. Um, it takes its toll on you at times. Uh, but I'm, I'm proud of our group, man. We emptied the tank tonight, and that's all I ask them to do before the game. Again, a reminder, raise your hand for questions. Let's go all the way in the back here. Coach Chris Hagan, Fox Indianapolis, right here. Uh, in those final couple of minutes, it's players. Uh, oh, players. Play will only. Start with okay, players. I'll go. I'll go with Zach. In those in those final couple of minutes, was it a question of their defense, or were you guys looking to milk clock? What was the mentality in those last couple of minutes? Uh, we just wanted to execute, and uh, we wanted to win the game. You know, we had them where we wanted, uh, but you know, in the, in the end, we didn't execute to get the win. Uh, Josh McKinney with WYNT TV for both Steve and Zach. What will you remember most about what you were, what you were able to accomplish this season? Let's start with Steve. Uh, yeah, it was it was a special season. Uh, a real special group of guys. Um, we won a lot of big games. Uh, we put ourselves in position to win today. So, um, you know, just remember the, the memories with the teammates and and big wins and um, you know playing with really tough kids. You know, especially our leaders, Jaron and Pat. Zach, if you can answer as well. <clears throat> yeah, one thing I, I definitely remember is you know being on the court with all twelve of my brothers. Um, it was a great experience. You know, it, it started in Italy. Um, you know, we had a great trip, uh, and you know we built something that was really special that this program hasn't seen in uh, you know a long time, and, uh, and it means so much to us. And uh, you know we're, we're happy to come right back in this year. Lower right hand. For Zach, could you talk about the play of, of Carl Towns? for them and what it was like trying to stop him. And, and Steve, you, you guys have scored on eight straight possessions. In the last three possessions, you didn't score. Was that more a tribute to their defense or something you didn't do on offense, do you think? Go ahead, Zach. Uh, uh, you know, you got to give him the credit. Uh, you know, he was a great post player. You know, I got some you know great looks. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just focused on us right now. Um, you know, we didn't do what we had to do to get the win, and, and that's all. Steve? Yeah, I think it was a, a combination of both. Um, you know, we were trying to uh, spread the floor like we've been doing all game, and I think we got some good looks. Uh, we just did, we just didn't knock them down like we had in the previous possessions. But uh, you know, like Coach and, and Zach said, you got to give them credit. They did a good job of contesting and uh, you know getting out on shooters and, and making it tough for us to you know to score in those possessions. And a reminder for media: please raise your hands for questions for both uh, Zach and for Steve. All the way in the back. To the left, Elton Alexander. Um, Zach, did you expect to, to be as productive as you were inside, considering their their size? Uh, I'm sure you expect to get something, but 20 points and nine rebounds was a, a big night for you. I just wanted to go out there and be aggressive, you know, and impact the game anyway. My teammates needed me, um, but it's not just about me. You know, we had a great, you know, team basketball. You know, everybody had a, a part of this game. Everybody did something, uh, you know, good from one to 13. Um, so, you know, we're just focused on to, uh, being together and, and, you know, enjoying this as a team. Any further questions for Steve or for Zach? Center. Yes, Steve, Bob Kravitz from Indianapolis, WTHR. What did you feel like you guys could do to attack Kentucky? And in what ways were you, did you feel you were successful? Uh, yeah, with, you know, with our guards and the way we play, I think we did a good job spreading the floor. Um, and we attacked the rim, you know, like we've been doing all season. Uh, you know, Jaron Demetrius got in the lane, and, and they didn't finish. Zach was right there to clean it up. So uh, I think we were able to, you know, spread the floor. And, um, you know, we just didn't do it enough to, to come out with the win. Any further questions for our student athletes? <clears throat> if seeing no hands, gentlemen, we'll let you get back to the locker room. Thank you for your time. We'll continue now with questions for Coach Bray. Again, a reminder, please raise your hand. We're going to go all the way to the back to the left and begin with, with Val. Mike Fahey, Gregorian, Kansas City Star. I, you lost the game, and I'm sure it's still pretty raw, but it, it, how much do you think this game is, is testimony to the idea that there are no sure things? I think a lot of people didn't see this kind of game coming. Yeah, I mean, we really thought we had a great chance. Um, as the game was going on, I. You know, I, I, 
you know, I thought we, we just felt we could win the game. I mean, we were very confident and, um, you know, the first half gave us even more confidence. Um, you know, we, we played such a great schedule and played so many hard games and good teams. I think it, it, we're really battle tested to, you know, absorb their punches. Um, I'm really proud of our group. Um, we were a little tired at the end. I used a couple timeouts just to rest us. Um, we, we were fatigued a little bit because our guys play a lot. And uh, their length at times shrinks the court. And it just makes it a little difficult. And it did there a couple possessions at the end of the game. Down to our lower left. Mike, uh, Larry Bell from Danville African Messenger. Could you talk, I know the last play you didn't have any time out. Kind of what was the plan? What did you discuss or hope it was going to happen there? Yeah, I told, you know, I told Jaron to try and get to the, you know, can you get to the bucket? Maybe you can just get to the bucket. They did such a great job kind of doubling him. And, you know, he went for the win. I, you know, I don't fault him for that. He tried to get something off. I don't think he could turn the corner. Even some of the shots he took in those possessions that were a little empty, you know, you can say get to the basket. It's a little harder to get to the basket against these guys. There's not a lot of room in there. And I thought they, they doubled him out of bounds, and they did a great job kind of riding them all the way to the end. Um, you know, when we couldn't get the key stop to get it to overtime, that's, that's where you lose the game, really. you got to get that stop. And it was Harrison, I think, right, that made the drive. He made a great drive. Demetrius tried to get the charge. Um, but when you don't get a stop there, you know, you're, 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 starting to, you're starting to doubt a little. Back to our left. Josh McKinney, WYMT. Can you talk about the defensive game plan? And aside from Carl, it seemed like Kentucky's bigs really struggled to get anything going down low. You know, we just didn't want to give up too many clean looks. You know, we, we would felt we could absorb two-point shots from their bigs. Towns was fabulous. Our, our two big guys, God bless them, they were on their own most of the night. The one time I go zone, Booker hits a three. And the one time we tell to help a little bit, um, Euless hits a three. So now you're like the rest of the game, fellas, you're on your own. We got to hug these guys because I think we could absorb twos. Um, yeah, I loved how we battled on the board against their size. But, you know, we've, we've played big teams and we've held our own on the backboard. And we did that again tonight to give ourselves a chance to win. All the way to our far right. Mike, David Hawks, Chicago Tribune. So how, how do you balance the emotions of playing as well as you did, taking it down to the last possession and knowing that this is the end and you lost the way you did? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if it'll sink in. You know, I think I was in denial because walking down the hall, I had August and Vastori and I was talking about next season. That was my, my, my way of, you know, thinking ahead a little bit. Um, the one thing I did tell them, I said, you know, when we walk out of here, man, we're champions now. We're going to get championship rings. We won a championship. This group won a championship, and um, hopefully it's something to build on. And I spent some time with Pat and Jaron and just thanked them for what they've done for our program. Um, I think it'll still be a little raw here till tomorrow, but I've been in it long enough. I'm able to look back and kind of digest it, and my assistants will probably have some recruiting stuff for me tomorrow knowing them. <laughs> Second row center. Uh, Mike, you mentioned Pat and Jerry. Is that kind of the toughest part of losing in this yeah. tournament is saying goodbye to seniors, especially two that have meant so much yeah. to you guys? You know, the one thing I said to them in the locker room, I said, you know what's really depressing? And we lost the game, but I don't get – we don't get to practice tomorrow. I don't get to be around this group, and that includes certainly our two seniors because it was so energizing and rewarding to be with this team. I mean, it, it was uplifting. And, you know, I was thinking walking down the hall like, that's over. You don't get to do that anymore. Um, but those two guys are big time winners. And man, have they left a great mark for the young guys in our program. Back row to our left. Julian Bimbo, Boston Globe. 34 seconds left. They're sorting through the loose ball. Did you care one way or the other whether it was a jump ball or your possession? Well, I'd love that we had it. You know, one second's a little tough to operate with. And we tried to get something for Jaron Curlin. The problem is when Cauley Stein is hot on the ball. There wasn't a whole lot of room to get anything. And it's too bad we couldn't at least get a shot up right there. Um, but I, I thought, you know, the ball pressure of a seven-footer and wingspan on Pat, we, we just couldn't get anything. And then you got to be really mentally tough. And this group, man, they have been all year to kind of flush that 
and guard to get it to overtime. We've done that a bunch. We, we couldn't do it tonight. And I you give Kentucky credit. Second row to our left. Mike Monaco with the Observer. Coach, uh, you <laughs> joked about being the loosest coach in America. <laughs> what are you telling them in the second half when you guys go on that 13-4 run and also the final minute? Too? Well, you know, I mean, when we were talking about this is what we've done in the second halves, you know, we've had runs offensively and we've played with great emotion and spirit and fearlessness. And, and you know, the, I wasn't saying a whole lot. They're talking in the timeouts like we're up five. Let's try and see if we can get it to ten. All things that we talked about through the year. And, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> I mean, we, we gave ourselves a chance. And it's disappointing because, you know, you, you really had it. You, you had the thing. You had a great chance to win it. And, um, but our guys felt we had a great chance to win it. Again, a reminder, please raise your hands for questions for Coach Bray right here, fourth row center. Bob Kravitz with WTHR in Indianapolis. What type, looking ahead to the final four, what type of team, what sort of style do you think can give Kentucky the kind of trouble? Did Wisconsin, did they win? Yeah, they won. Yeah, that's a great matchup. Wow, that's a great matchup. Um, Wisconsin is a little bit like us. You know, they're skilled and they can spread people out a little bit. Now, they've got, they've got a little more bulk and front line size, but, um, you know, they're really skilled offensive guys, you know, and, and, Certainly, we were able to get some things tonight. But you know that the size does get to you. At over 40 minutes, it, it can take its toll on you. And I thought the defensive possessions, as good as Jaron was getting us there, getting us a couple possession lead, it kind of swaddled him a little bit at, at a couple times. But we'll go down with him making plays because he's made all the plays for us all year to get us here. Any final questions for Coach Bray? To the back, to our left. Coach, you mentioned how you were looking ahead to next year, yeah. even after. What do you What do you see when you look ahead to, oh, to next year? A quick snapshot: When you have Jackson, August, Vastoria, Bonzi, Colson, Beecham, you know, you, you know, you got a nice nucleus of guys that were a big part of a a heck of a year. So I really hope that's something for us to to build on. I'm, I'm excited about moving forward with that group. Coach Ray, thank you for your thank time. Thank you.